Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. We are so glad to have you with us today. I'm Derek Shore in Studio B, along with Courtney Safala. Yeah, welcome they back. let me back in again today, so I guess that's okay. It wasn't just a one one time thing. Didn't you have trouble getting into the building <laughs> yesterday? Your security badge had been deactivated. No. Oh, I no. heard that rumor. No. No, I'm kidding. I was kidding. locked out of my computer though multiple times. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I know. You know, it's so crazy. Uh, you know, pe I, we're doing a Facebook Live now, and people have been asking, like, how do you like going back in? My neighbors, my across-the-street neighbor, Mr. George, he's like, I don't know, Courtney. I kind of like knowing that you're right there. I didn't like you driving in yesterday. So it's so crazy because when I was talking to you this morning on our way in uh, driving, I said, I think I should have left, like, 10 minutes earlier. My timing is a little off. But also because... Because we are still working much of the day from home, from yeah. our computers at home, we try not to spend as much time at the office. I still stay here way too late anyway, but the whole idea is you stay at home later and work from home and then come to the studio to do the show. Right. So you're also coming in later, and so am I, and that can be a little bit, you know, the traffic patterns in Houston are... Unpredictable? Unpredictable, at best. I mean, I was just looking at the opposite lanes of 59 on my way in today, the the um, the uh, northbound lanes. Yeah. And it was a parking lot. Oh, yeah. That's how it normally is. Like, if you live in Sugar Land and you are driving downtown, that's always a really oh, slow well, drive Well, yeah, morning. not during a pandemic, though. I mean, I know people are out and about and things like that, but I was just surprised. It looked like it was about 4 p.m., on the road, like that's how yeah. backed up it was. It wasn't moving. I'm sure there was some some sort of problem. And I did not realize yesterday on my way home that the the on ramp to 610 is now a one laner. That's oh, yeah. fun. That that's whole real fun. Interchange is under construction. Had no idea it was a one laner. I thought, what's the problem? What's the problem over here? Why can't I go? A lot of things change. A lot of things months. change over. Three you know what I was thinking about this morning because our show is moving to 3 p.m. In case you missed the announcement on yesterday's Houston Life, we are moving to 3 p.m. Tra trading places with Dr. Phil essentially. So Dr. Phil will start at one. We'll be at three, and we will miss our 1 p.m. time slot. But we're very much looking forward to three as well. But I was thinking this morning, wow, well, how does that, how does that work out with a day? I have no idea. You know, idea. like what time yeah. will we come to work? What time will we go home? And all of that. A lot of questions. I know. It's first world problems, right? We'll I figure know. it out. We'll figure it out. Bit of a tailspin now. I'm not good when things are about to change, when I don't know what's happening. You know, I, I, I like my routine. And so when I'm not really sure what's ahead of me, that's where I get a little, it kind of keeps me up at night. I think that's the that's way most normal? people would feel, okay. though. Yeah. Okay. People like structure. They like predictability. Yes. I, I need to know when you know, where I'm going, what I'm doing, <laughs> controlling. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. Hey, did you know today is also National Hydration Day? I did not know. What's that, a martini in there? How'd you know? Because <laughs> no, I just, know you. It's just water. Mm -hmm. It's just water. I saw that shaker in the makeup room. Because you know me. <laughs> you think I walk around with martinis? I'm not going to say it's never happened. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. It's water. It's definitely water. Yes, and it's been hot and humid, so you definitely have to up that water intake. Yeah, I know. Well, another thing that we featured on yesterday's show, a lot of you commented on, my mom and I had a long chat about this, too, because she was horrified. She was? <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to say? Oh, no. About what? Well, t tantrums. When we went to Tantrums LLC yeah. and we took baseball bats and, you know, golf clubs and all of that. That Sledge is Sean, hammer. by the way, the woman who owns this place. That is Sean Baker. And part of the reason we loved going there, not just smashing everything, but Sean has such a great story. She had worked in oil and gas for a long time. And then a few years ago, she was laid off. She started this business and uh, they have all kinds of corporate events like group activities, team building where people can go in and Courtney, wow, get their aggression out. I mean, we, we, really, we really had a good time there. And my mom watching it, um, I was like, mom, when you come to Houston, I am taking you to tant tantrums. Yeah. So we can smash a bunch of stuff. She says she doesn't think she could do it. Why? Because the whole idea of breaking something for some people, it like freaks them out. I've got to say, it was 
so much fun and so satisfying in yeah. so many ways. I would go back in a second. Well, and here's the thing. I would go back to, not for a team building exercise, just to go. <laughs> Katie, in case you're listening. Um, but <laughs> the weird thing for me was like, you know, we were there, we had our GoPro, we had everything set up in there. And so when, when, when they said, okay, go ahead and, and break whatever you need to break, it was a weird feeling. Are, are you sure right now? Are, right now you break it? Like, it was just a weird feeling to actually go and break it. But once you did, it was just sort of satisfying. This is what it feels like to be a criminal. Well, no, I didn't say that. No, I, I'm just saying we're taught not to break things, right? Right, or and smash things and vandalize things. And but the room <laughs> is set up to do that, and <laughs> it was just, it was, it was really quite satisfying, you know? Yeah, I really got into it. Paul, who was our photographer there shooting it, um, he was like, wow, I expected Courtney to be the really mean one, but Derek, you just really, you really let it out. <laughs> was it, did he say mean or he said something to that effect? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think you just added that in, maybe. <laughs> because it was quite fun. Normally, I, I don't know, I might come off as a little more gentle. Probably, I yeah. my moments. Yeah, but what's so cool about Sean, and she spent so much time with us and set up that room, and um, she says that, you know, of course there's corporate events or some people just go there before they work out. They go and like get warmed up and then go do like an intense workout. They also have military discounts. I mean, there's all kinds <laughs> of things. And at the end of the day, let's face it, she's a small business, but she's probably more better categorized as a micro business, right? And she's just trying to make ends meet. This is she is filling a, a, a void where people can go in and aggression, get it out, do whatever you want to do. And you know what? You're helping a small business, which is so cool, right? Yeah, yeah it's true. And the workout thing, I forgot about that. Yeah. She said there's a guy who goes in and does a 15-minute session where he gets the really heavy sledgehammer, the 20-pound uh -huh. sledgehammer, and then he slams it down against that giant tire she has, and then he goes and works out. I mean, that's a workout in and of itself. I know. So it was, it was pretty cool, for sure. Um, okay, so I saw something, and it totally made me think of you. Uh-oh. And, and I know you didn't fly to Barcelona yesterday, but this happened in Barcelona. And, um, you know, we went to, you know, we love going to concerts and plays and seeing Dixie. You and I saw Katy Perry together. I know, I know. And... It's, it was so cool that um, there was this concert, a, um, like a symphony, if you will, okay. in Barcelona, okay. and they filled the chairs. The, the, the auditorium was filled okay. with plants. <gasps> plants. Oh my goodness. Yes, and the, the song that was played was, um, I believe it was Chrysanthemum, was the title of the piece of work. How perfect. I know, I'm gonna find it for you. There was um, 2,292 plants, plants that filled How big the were the auditorium. plants? I don't know, they just put them in their seats. <laughs> it's so funny. I know. But, but the whole idea then was, what? I don't know. I don't really know what the idea was, but they, the orchestra played Chrysanthemum to a bunch of plants How in Barcelona. How beautiful and unusual. This is it? This is it. Serenading plants. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that so cool? And you know what? Plants would make the perfect audience because they're quiet. They don't say anything, but Something just think of all the oxygen in the room. The oxygen in the room, the performers probably loved it. The plants weren't talking or opening any crinkly bags. No. I gotta tell you, it still coughing. shocks me. The number of times I am at the theater or whatever, and I, adults, we were, we were at a local establishment watching a performance about a year ago when my sister was visiting. And during the performance, a woman stood up in the audience and screamed at another patron Her of the theater. I am not making this up. I'm not making this up. I remember this, this story. I don't want to tell you where it was because it doesn't reflect poorly upon the theater. Right. It was this woman who was out there dressed up, a night out. It was during the holidays in December, a very popular show we all go see as a tradition. And she stood up and she was like, swing at me, blank, yelled an expletive, like literally in the no middle way. of a performance. And I thought, I'm sorry, first of all, what barn were you raised in? And secondly, we're busy watching the show on the stage. Not interested in that show, Jerry Springer. Take it outside. Oh, or what? Like, my word. The lack of 
manners. I mean, this went so far beyond manners. If anyone was in that audience that night, and you remember this, please message me because my niece is I was traumatized. Like, I had Samantha on my lap. She was four at the time, and I, <laughs> I was holding her. And she was like, what's going on back there? I was it's just trying part to... of the performance. <laughs> it's, it's performance <laughs> art. The oh role of the beast gosh. is being played by the woman in the sequin dress back there yelling. Yeah, can you believe that? No, I remember you telling me that story, though. Oh, I do remember. I know. It was an isolated incident. But every time we've been out, though, you know, people will, like, pull out their cell phones. It always right. drives me crazy when I go to a live performance. These actors or dancers, whatever, singers on stage, they have spent so much time rehearsing. You've probably spent a lot of money for your ticket. Uh, and you're yes. going to sit there and check your Facebook status during the show? Not cool. Not cool. That is not cool. Mm, Same no. type of people who probably dump their mask and gloves in the grocery store parking lot. And on the ground. I know. Animals. Mm, mm-hmm. Animals. Uh, did you know that during COVID, I, I feel so worked up just thinking I about know. that woman. Do you want to go break something? <laughs> I just want to go break something now. So um, these home improvement projects, you know, I'm a big fan of DIY. Yeah. We do a lot of segments here at Houston Life. And when I was 13 years old, I helped finish my mom's basement. So from fr framing to electrical to tile, all of those things, tile. All of yeah. So if there's a painting project or you need a toilet replaced, you just call me and I'll walk you through it on the phone because <laughs> it's easier than anyone imagines but during covid so many people i think an estimated like nearly 80 percent of people have attempted a diy home improvement project right sometimes it goes okay other times it ends up taking forever and costing a lot of money a lot of money i will tell you orlando is like macgyver he can fix anything he's awesome. so handy he's building things and um during the quarantine he helped it he helped he, he he did the entire project, but the shoe wall in my closet, remember, I, we talked about that months ago. He built that, but then he wanted to restain our, our fence, and oh. he restained the entire fence in the backyard. Wow, that's, that's a, a big, big job. Did he use a pressure washer first? He did. He did, and um, uh -oh. dealt with some overspray situation there. So Into it went, the neighbors? It, it, and then, it, then we had plan, he had plan B. The kids were out there for literally 2.5 seconds. You know, they got bored super quick. They didn't wanted no part of it. But he loves all that stuff. He gets into it. Yeah, it's great. There's something really empowering about being able to fix something yourself. Totally. We installed a dimmer a while back, and we've replaced light fixtures and stuff. Remember the time we painted our bathroom? One of the yes. bathrooms pink, and we thought it would be great, and it yeah. was hideous. So we repainted it a but different shade of pink. repainting is okay. And then we repainted it again back to the original color. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the good thing about paint is you can paint over it. Yeah, but the bad thing is it was just illogical and poorly planned from the beginning because we lost three Saturdays in yeah. the process. The first Saturday to paint the original paint, right. the next Saturday to repaint, and then the third Saturday to put it back to where it was. But now you know the lesson learned is don't paint. Bad paint happens to good people. I am so proud that you would <laughs> use one of my dad jokes. It works every time, it doesn't it? It works every time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, folks, let's <laughs> chat about today's show. That's very good. That Thank is very you. good. Thank very, you. very good line. All right, so folks, Moody Gardens. Love it. One of our favorite spots. My mom and I love this spot. It's great for the whole family, great for kids. And today, we have got tips to help you plan your next visit, like when to go, what to do while you're there, where to stay. Plus, we're going to have a preview of the current attractions and folks. A great hint is to book online before you go. No, before you go. Also, guys, have you heard The Biggest Loser? It's looking for Houston contestants for an all-new season of the popular show. One of my favorites. I was addicted to this show. And because of the pandemic, producers are now going to be meeting with potential contestants remotely. Lauren Kelly is going to chat with one of the casting producers about what they are looking for in this new season. All right, very nice. And after the break, how to control breakouts, whether you're a teen or even an adult, it happens to us all. We're getting pro tips on helping to fight acne. We'll be right back. An estimated 50 million Americans are dealing with acne, a very common skin condition that can lead to permanent changes in the skin, scarring, and of course can take a toll on a person's self-esteem. It sure can. Joining us to share the latest treatments to control breakouts and habits to become acne-free, Dr. Sherry Ingerham from Advanced Dermatology. It's so great to see you, Dr. Ingerham. 
to see you both. And you know what? Here's the thing. I would love to say that acne is just age specific. And I broke out more when I turned 30 than I ever did at 13. So acne doesn't seem to go away. No, you know, I hear that every day. Most women tell me I never had acne in high school. I'm in my 30s now and it's just hitting. And there's really an entire line of products that are developed now for women in their 30s and 40s because you don't have that oily type of skin. You have a more sensitive, delicate skin. So there's really something for everyone. And I have dealt with this uh, for a long time. When I turned 20, I figured all the zits would go away. I still get them and I'm right. nearly 40. So let's get to some of the causes because I know men and women have different hormones, uh, but hormones can be a factor, right? And as well as diet and habits. So really it's a combination, like you said, a myriad of factors. It can be hormones, diet, genetics, and really your skin care. And so when you combine those, each patient has a different factor that factors in the most for them. So for example, you could have a normal testosterone level and still get breakouts, or you can have elevated testosterone levels and get more. We know that because a lot of people take exogenous testosterone treatments, men and women, and they break out more. Also, if you have like polycystic ovarian syndrome, there's certain syndromes women can get that can affect their testosterone levels and affect their skin. Also with diet, we know that if you're pre-diabetic or you have insulin resistance, you're more prone to acne. Dairy products, whey protein in our shakes, some of our protein shakes can really contribute to acne as well. Wow. The, I, that's really amazing. The other thing too, when you see the pimple, the zit, the blackhead, we want to go in and we want to pop it, we want to squeeze it. What, what do we do with it? Do we leave it alone? Can we leave it alone? I don't know. That's a really, really probably the most important question of the day. And it depends on what you have going on. I always say there's nothing that's ever made better in the history of dermatology by a patient picking it. So by a rule, I advise don't pick. And what I usually say is grab some Aquaphor. If you're a picker and you have that little micro mirror at home and you're sitting there at home, looking in your mirror, working from home now, avoid picking, dab a little aquaphor on, it makes it feel greasy, you don't wanna pick, right? However, if you do have an event coming up, you're gonna be out in public, you can get a mask, you can get a mask with some benzoyl peroxide in it from Neutrogena, or I love this clay mask, and you can dab these on the breakouts while you're sitting there working on your computer, not on a Zoom call, perhaps, <laughs> but you can wear these throughout the day. That's kind of the beauty of working from home. You can right. treat this, but then that kind of leads us into something we can discuss later on, which is mask knee, which is a whole new condition. Well, okay, tell, let's just go for it. What is that? Well, mask knee, you know, we have back knee, of course, and now we have mask knee. I advocate we wear our mask all the time as much as possible. However, because we are wearing our mask, and we're seeing this a lot in healthcare workers, we're seeing more breakouts of rosacea and acne in the mask oh, area. Of course. So things you can do to mitigate that when you can wear a cotton mask. So I've got this groovy advanced dermatology mask. It's good to wear a cotton mask because you can wash it daily and wash the bacteria, dirt, and makeup off. If you can avoid wearing makeup under your mask, don't wear it because you're just adding a level of occlusion in a hot Houston zone and you're gonna make more acne and flare your rosacea. Also, if you wear a mask all day, you know, here in healthcare, we're wearing a mask every minute of every day and now we have a mask order. So you really should always be wearing a mask when you're out. When you come home, take off that mask get a good micellar water and wipe your face. That'll mm -hmm. wipe kind of any debris and grime off, but it won't overstrip the skin. Um, if you're a greasier person, oilier, or you're really acne prone, teens, for example, wash with something that has salicylic acid or beta hydroxy acids in it. I like SkinCeuticals LHA cleanser. You can buy that online or at your dermatologist's office or at Walgreens, a drugstore, you can get good Neutrogena acne wash. You want to remember, be gentle to mask me because anything you use is really going to sit under that mask and possibly concentrate. So if you're on a retinoid for acne, maybe don't use it as often right now. Maybe you go to twice a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Ingerham, if we're not dealing with just the occasional breakout, if someone really does have the acne and the flare-ups and it's not going away, what are some of the things that we can do to help that? 
great, great point. So most people are doing just that. They have chronic acne. It may come and go. You want to keep your stress level down, stress, lack of sleep, eating too much sugar, drinking too much caffeine. All of these things drive cortisol, which can stimulate acne. So you want to have a healthy lifestyle. The next step is, of course, you can try over-the-counter products. I like over-the-counter Effaclar. This is a great product from La Roche-Posay that has benzoyl peroxide in it and some alpha hydroxy acids. If you're not seeing improvement with over-the-counter products, make an appointment with a board-certified dermatologist. Right now, most of us are back in our offices, but we also have telemedicine visits. If you're not able to come in due to COVID right now, is a great time to make a telemedicine acne visit. We're really reaching out to more people. We have a lot of prescription options. We put people on oral antibiotics, spironolactone, which is a hormone blocking drug, oftentimes birth control pills. And then of course, Accutane, which is one of the most tried and true and tested effective medicines for acne. Because ultimately, what we're trying to do, Courtney, and I'm glad you brought this up, my goal as a dermatologist is to prevent scarring. Scarring can be lifelong. So we see patients really to prevent acne and scarring and dark spots. And then if there are dark spots and scarring, we now have treatments we can do for them. And we are tight on time. When it comes to telemedicine, I mentioned earlier that one morning when I woke up, Dr. Ingraham, and my face was all puffy, you knew exactly the problem and how to fix it. Uh, very final thoughts in terms of great habits that teens uh, can get into to improve their skin, and also does diet really affect our skin? Yes, diet affects your skin. We're learning more and more about this every day. The first thing I tell my patients is do not drink dairy products as a beverage. If you can change over to almond milk, soy milk, flax milk, something with vitamin C and calcium, vitamin D and calcium, but get off the dairy products, the whey protein. If you are a teen, wash your face every day. Mm -hmm. Do not scrub it, do not pick it, but find a good salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide wash start there and remember be kind to your skin if you find yourself sitting in front of that mirror picking it again apply aquaphor or vaseline to the spot pick up your phone and make an appointment with the dermatologist and stop picking oh okay. always great advice and great products that you can find at the drugstore as well dr sherry ingerham with advanced dermatology it's always great to see you and also to keep up with dr ingerham visit our website that's the scene on section of click to houston.com it's so hard not to pick though right i know oh. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> Don't do it, folks. All right, after the break, when it comes to home maintenance, how often should you change your home's air filters? Every couple months, maybe when you remember, we will have the answer next. Time for our Tip Tuesday with one hour air conditioning and heating of Houston. How often should you change the air filters in your home? This is a great question, folks. So the pros at one hour suggest checking filters every single month. And when you check them at replacement time and find they're completely covered in dust, hair, and other particles, you should consider replacing them sooner than you had originally thought. Well, it seems like an easy task to remember, but you might want to set an alert on your phone or a calendar to remind yourself. And remember, replacing your filters routinely, not just once in a while, can also help you avoid costly repairs and problems in the future. It is so true. We just replaced our filters last weekend. If you would like to learn more, you can visit onehourhoustonac.com. Good information. And also, this is our favorite time of the show. We get to highlight our student artists. And just because I'm back in the studio doesn't mean it's going to stop. I had a lot of artwork left over. So we want to highlight Maddie today. And she did this beautiful canvas. She's a rising seventh grader. And um, I love this. It's super bright. It's kind of like ocean themed. And I, I don't know. I love it. I love all the vision that these kids have. I know. And every single one is so different. I think we need to I don't know, change the set out and create a gallery wall where we can hang up a bunch of our art. I've got it. I've got it all ready in a pile to bring back and it's going to happen for sure. Cover an entire wall. Nicely Absolutely. done. Thanks, Maddie. Well, The Biggest Loser is returning for an all new season and producers are looking for Houstonians to be part of the show. After the break, Lauren Kelly chats with one of the show's longtime casting producers about what they're looking for in contestants. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. Let's get a check of the weather now with meteorologist Justin Stapleton standing by in our Studio B. Justin. 
Great to see you, bud. Good to see you guys as well. Welcome back, Court. It's Thank nice you. To talk to you in person here again. All right, guys, we've got a busy 24 hours ahead of us here weather-wise. We've got some dying storms down around the coast. You can see those basically from Friendswood down to Galveston. These are not what we're expecting to cause some trouble. It's this right here. We've got a little swirl in the atmosphere. It's up near Dallas. Doesn't look like much now, but it's going to slowly swing southward as it does. All of that warm, juicy air that's over top of us now is going to cause a potential for some heavy rain. We're in the temperatures around 90 degrees, and you can see we've got a flash flood watch for everybody kicks in at seven o'clock tonight it goes through Wednesday morning we could see about two to four inches widespread and there could be some isolated pockets especially late tonight early tomorrow of six to eight inches notice it doesn't really move much through about 4 a.m. and then finally slowly starts to shift south and east as we get in towards the afternoon so that's what we're gonna have to watch out for obviously Frank will be here this evening as well if you're watching uh, and the weather team we're all working together right now to see exactly how this is gonna pan out but keep a heads up tonight and early tomorrow for that morning commute. If you're going to be out there in the wet weather, please do not drive if obviously the roads are uh, impacted and you don't have to head in. Otherwise, guys, we've got a pretty more tip, uh, pretty much more typical weather. I'll get that out as we get <laughs> towards the weekend back into the low 90s. Justin, thank you for that. When you zoomed out on that radar map, all that lightning down in the Gulf, my uh -huh. goodness, storms are coming. Crazy. Thanks, Justin. Well, The Biggest Loser is back for an all-new season, and if you've ever wanted to be part of this life-changing show, here's your chance. Yeah, they are planning to select contestants from the Houston area, and Lauren Kelly is chatting with one of the show's longtime casting producers to find out just what they're looking for. I've got to admit to you guys, one of my favorite shows to follow along with and sob with and laugh and cry with over the past few years has been Biggest Loser. And I'm so excited to have one of the longtime casting producers, Holland Weathers, joins us today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Now, I have to make one small admission. While watching Biggest Loser in the past, I would sit there after dinner with my dessert and then all of a sudden I feel motivated to go and toss it out and go work out like ASAP. <laughs> I know, isn't that funny? Like we hear that a lot. Like it really does inspire people no matter what have you go what you have going on. Really excited that the show is coming back to the US and Bob is gonna be back and you've got two new trainers this year is gonna be Erica Lugo and Steve Cook and any trainers you guys have had on have just been amazing. We're really excited to have um, Erica Lugo is part of our team because she actually weighed over 300 pounds and lost the weight on her own and so all the contestants can really relate to her and her journey and she's just her and Steve both are really amazing trainers to have and then Bob's back as the host since we're on USA Network now and we're really excited to have them back. You are now going to be casting throughout the Houston area but it's going to be a little bit different this time obviously due to COVID 19. Yeah, it's really different for us because normally we go to uh, cities all over the country and hold casting calls, but right now it's exciting because we're doing everything virtual. So a lot of times people, you know, don't want to go and wait in line for hours to meet with us. So now all they have to do is get out of bed, even in their pajamas, sit in front of the computer, fill out the application and hopefully get a call from us. And we do Skype interviews. So everything is online and, um, and then we'll have them make a little video for us to tell us a little bit about themselves and and go from there and hopefully you get the call that you made the show now Holland this is this is like your 15th year casting the biggest loser you've been there and you've done that are there any secrets behind what contestants should do to maybe get more of a leg up like is there something specific they should do in their video or what kind of clothes they should wear any kind of little secrets or tips you can share I mean it sounds cliche but really just be themselves and really tell us what's going on why they want to lose the weight and get healthy um, anything that they can think of from their past or present of um, why the reasons why they want to lose the weight is, is just be honest with us. That's really the best advice that I could give. I'm, I'm pretty good at my job, so I'm good at seeing through people that are just putting on a show or telling us what they think we want to hear. We don't want you to be like any past contestants. We want you for you, and there's 
you know, with somebody, it could be their story. With somebody, it could be their personality. With somebody, it could be something that they've been through. You just, you'd never know. I mean, we choose people for all different reasons. We're just looking for anyone and everyone that wants to get healthy, that has at least around 100 pounds to lose, but, you know, give or take a little bit. So if it is, you know, 80, 90 pounds, 100 plus, we say just go online and submit and see what happens. You know, that gym and the house, what do they do with it in the off season? And can I rent it out and work out there while it's not being used? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, you know, we, we moved the set to New Mexico last season, and I actually don't know what's going on with it right now. We used to go there and, do, you know, they did like little tours and stuff, but I'm not sure actually right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to request Bob. I'm going to go ahead and get his number to give me a yeah. little tour and a little personal training. <laughs> he is so awesome too. He would totally work out with you. <laughs> oh, he would just kick my butt is what he would do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Holland Weathers, it's been a pleasure. I'm really excited and looking forward to the new season of The Biggest Loser, which is going to be running on the USA Network Casting. Houston people, we're looking for you. All you have to do is click on blcasting.tv or get more info at houstonlife.tv. It would be so great to see some Houstonians on that show. Lauren, thank you. Absolutely. I loved, love, love that show. I'm so glad it's coming back. Well, after the break, planning a visit to one of our favorite places, of course, Moody Gardens. Well, from booking online to a new payment policy, we're going to break down what you need to know before you go. That's coming up next. Welcome back. If you're looking for something fun to do with a family, we've got you covered. Moody Gardens is open and ready for visitors. One of our favorite places, Moody Gardens marketing director Jerry Hamachek joins us now with what you need to know before you go. And you have the perfect backdrop, girl. You got some friends, some seals with you today. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> That's, this is Sam, our sea lion, and uh, he's waving to everybody if you can see oh, that. Oh, so cute. <laughs> That's, we're in the Aquarium Pyramid, and uh, yeah, we're, we're open and we're inviting everybody to come back and, uh, you know, just doing some things different these days as we need to, but encouraging everybody to come have fun and do it safely. And I know that, as you mentioned, you're doing this safely, uh, social distancing guidelines are in place. What I love about Moody Gardens is it has a very nostalgic feel for so many people. It's a tradition, but there's always something new to see. Yeah, you know, in these days, we know that everybody's kind of in a different place. Some people are ready to come out and some people are a little cautious staying at home. Um, we do have our protocols all in place and um, actually there's a new uh, face mask policy that was just, uh, just started today here yeah. in Galveston. So that's just an extra step we can all take to be safe. But there's some opportunities, I think, to help accommodate everybody no matter where you're at. So. I recommend if you're a little nervous about coming out, um, choose a weekday. That's the best secret because you can come here. Not only do we have some great rates at the hotel on weekdays, but our crowds are a little bit smaller on the weekdays. So you can come and have a great time, take your time with it. And that's just kind of an opportunity to kind of plan your day, how you want to do that, depending on where you're at. Well, those are great tips. I have to tell you, the seal is stealing the show back there, just over there waving, giving us a little And it almost looks wave. like a screen because I know. it's so it's, perfect it what's going so on behind you. I know. But this is live. That You are right there watching this happen. I love it. I love it, Jerry. Also, you recommend doing, like, before you go, in order to have basically your best trip to Moody Gardens, is do everything online. Plan your trip, buy your tickets, book everything before you go. Yes, uh, buy online and then we also have a cashless policy in place right now. So everything's credit card only, but buy your tickets in advance. That way you don't have to go stand in a line and you can come here and just get straight into the fun. And Sam will be here waiting for you as you can see, he's dancing over there. <laughs> um, so uh, you can come and enjoy all of that. And over at the Moody Gardens Hotel, we have some great experiences as well. So you see here, you know, people are here at the Aquarium Pyramid. But when you're staying over at the hotel, we have bicycles that you can uh, 
you can use and this, they're just courtesy bicycles if you want to go for a bike ride or you want to walk around the grounds you can do that too you can venture over to the rainforest pyramid and check out uh, some of the macaws and the monkeys and uh, the different animals here like the turtles and you can get individual tickets to the moody gardens attraction so you can choose what you want to do individually or you can get a value pass and do it all and something that we have new this summer, you just saw the dinosaurs there, that's our Dinosaurs Alive exhibit. So if you love dinosaurs, we have that too. We have indoor and outdoor activities and all of our attractions are really kind of more spacious open places and they really kind of blend themselves to the social distancing that we all need to be practicing these days. So you can come out and feel comfortable. We take care of all the protocols behind the scenes and you come here and have a great time and be comfortable knowing that we're doing that. That's great. And the booking online is genius, so especially you guys always have such great packages. Mm -hmm. You can do more things, you save money, this is everything. You buy tickets, you can book your hotel stay, the tea times on the golf course, you can also book online. In in advance what is the best time for us to come down weekdays weekends weekdays are definitely a better a better deal so you can get some great deals over at the moody gardens hotel you can hang out by the pool enjoy fine dining casual dining maybe a little spa time um, and we have a great package that's called our Babes Beach Package. So we'll shuttle you to and from the seawall to Babes Beach here in Galveston. And we give you a little beach bag to take with you so you can get in a little bit of island time here while you're here. <laughs> and I'm uh, I'm laughing here and Sam will be here to greet you when you come <laughs> over to the aquarium. <laughs> and uh, so you can take advantage of all of that. We've got great uh, golf course packages too with the hotel. So just kind of see what packages are available with attractions or the golf course or Babe Speech or a variety of other different things. So just find what suits you and come and enjoy yourself. What I really love, Jerry, too, is that this covers all ages. I remember when my boys were two and three years old and they had so much fun going and they still enjoy it today as almost 13 and nine. And so I feel like every time we go to Moody Gardens, it's a different experience. They see their old favorites, but then they they also know where to go. Oh, don't worry, mom, I know where to get there. So it's a whole, the age thing it, you're gonna cover everybody's gonna have a great time oh grandparents love it yeah. too yeah yeah you know kids grandparents everybody in, in between loves all the different experiences here everyone loves the penguins too even though we're focusing on the seals the penguins are here as well and uh, we just also want to remind people that you know everyone's been obviously under a little bit of stress these days and coming here and enjoying your, to yourself is really a great thing to do but moody gardens by design is a therapeutic experience mm -hmm. as soon as you enter our grounds the gardens that are all here the different attractions that we have here are all meant to be fun but also therapeutic so you can just come here and exhale and just really enjoy yourself which everybody can probably appreciate these days well, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> Perfect timing. I guess Sam is done. He just, he's done with lunch, jump ba jumping back into the water. <laughs> Jerry Hamachek, it is great to see you, and we'll see you down on the island very soon. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. And in the meantime, if you would like more information, you can visit their website, moodygardens.org, or you can give them a call at 409-744-4673. And coming up next, did you know that only 30% of diagnosed colorectal cancer cases have family history? More on the importance of screenings right after the break. Did you know colorectal cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer-related deaths in the U.S.? And here with more on the importance of screenings is colon and rectal surgeon Dr. Eric Askenasi with Memorial Hermann. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And this is something I think a lot of people still have a little bit of a stigma. They don't want to talk about it, but this is something we need to talk about. The numbers for colorectal cancer are on the rise, but this is something that's curable. Yeah, it really is, actually. The, if you really think about it, one in 20 people-ish, maybe 4.5% of the population, so one in 20, one in 24, sometime during their life are going to end up with colon cancer or colorectal cancer. It's, uh, it's a taboo subject. People don't like to talk about it, but it's something that if you don't like, address, it will literally well, it'll get you in the rear. I guess that's a really corny. That is a that's really a good one. Yeah. That's a good I'm one. I'm gonna have to use that one. Get more. you in the rear. <laughs> yeah. And doctor, as with so many different types of cancers, the key is early detection. Yes. Correct. Right. So we can prevent many of these. Well, cancers typically start as polyps, right? And then then they grow over time. 
and then they'll become invasive or break through certain layers, what we true call, call it a true cancer. Well, if we can catch it early, as in with a colonoscopy, you can prevent that whole process from really kind of snowballing forward. Essentially removing those polyps before they become cancerous. And it takes, what, eight to ten years before they do become right. cancerous in many cases. Right. That's why we recommend people get scopes in general every ten years. Start at 40, 45, or 50, depending on the different organization. Um, or different recommendations. African Americans seem to be get it at 45, Caucasians about 50, but then that seems to be shifting over towards 45 because we're starting to see increases of the in incidence of colorectal cancer starting to increase in younger people. And so we're saying maybe 45 is the right age. Regardless, just get yourself screened so that you don't have to worry about this later on. You know what I think is so amazing? My father-in-law's had uh, colon cancer, had it removed, all of that. Orlando went through some screenings, had some kind of bizarre signs at, at 40. And um, when we went in and he had his, um, his screening done, found those polyps removed and all those issues. And, and I think what's interesting is the people that have the signs and don't do anything, ignoring it doesn't make it go away way is basically the point right there's there's this kind of this thought out there is oh it's all hemorrhoids every everyone that comes into my office has hemorrhoids it seems like and I'm like okay tell me exactly your symptoms right, right. like well I have this I'm bleeding okay well how long have you been treated for oh like three years o okay well that's a problem why yeah right? right why so if you've had rectal bleeding or intermittent bleeding or pain or something's not right or your bowel movements have changed you have some weight loss something's going on that's just not right with your digestive tract Sure, you could get treated conservatively for you know a few weeks, maybe even a few months, but if it persists beside, after that, you probably want to get it evaluated. And people just don't like getting colonoscopies because they have to poop 40 times, right. like one day or 20 times, evacuate their bowels and then get the scope. But the reality is there is a huge aspect of peace of mind afterwards of saying, oh, it's just hemorrhoids or, oh, there was a polyp and we got it screened or, God forbid, there is something that's even worse. Right. And we've taken care of it or we need to have a surgery in order to address this. But there's a there's a huge aspect of patient comfort that's really not talked about in this. And it's it, it will save your life, though. I mean, right. that's what I have a hard time processing in my brain from a healthcare provider standpoint. People may be uncomfortable talking about their bowels and that part of their body. It's a private area, right? You're a doctor. You see this all the time. Your message to patients? Just get screened. Seriously, it's not that bad. I mean, really, it's not that bad. I know it's a taboo area, and we're a very conservative culture. That's okay. That's fine. But seriously, if, you're gonna, if, you, have a, if you have 100 people at a family reunion, 100 people, five of them are going to get colon cancer. Wow. So think about it that way. You want to be around? Just and want to make sure everything's okay, just get screened. It's not that bad. The risks of a colonoscopy are extremely small, like one in a thousand that something really bad happens from a colonoscopy. So just get yourself screened. Exactly. And save your life, quite honestly. Yeah. Also, this is really important to look at your bowel movements. I know this is another issue that people don't want. It, look what's going on in the toilet bowl. It's okay to, after you have your bowel movement, looking and going, okay, every, I mean, you don't have to do it every time. You don't have to admire what you made, but you just look down and go, okay, there it is. All right, right. done. Looks normal. Looks, looks normal. Do your wipe, wash your hands, flush the toilet, you're done. Right. Poop, there it is. Okay. Oh, okay. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> now we went down that road. Yeah, Let's talk about family history, because while that could be an indicator of an increased risk, you say that about 70% of people diagnosed with colorectal cancer have zero Right, history. They, they seem to be de novo. Now, as we learn more about genetics, that number can shift a little bit, but the vast majority of patients currently are believed to have basically new colon cancer. The, the cells in our intestines turn over remarkably quickly. So the reason we can eat what we typically eat in the American diet and, and not die is because our cells protect us and turn over and regenerate. If you're chewing gum and you bite the inside of your mouth, how long does it take to heal? Like, two days, three days, right? You just yeah. took a huge chunk out of the inside of your cheek. If you bit your arm or your hand or your leg that hard, it'd take a week or two. The cells internally regenerate very quickly. And so when they turn over, since they turn over so often, occasionally they can have an aberrancy or an abnormality in that change, in that turnover. That's where we believe the cancer probably starts from. Therefore, most cancers are not family related. Most cancers are probably from an abnormal turnover of the cells. Okay. But if you do have a history of it in your family, should you be getting screened at a younger age and more frequently? Yeah, so younger age, yes. So let's say that 
your dad or your mom or your sister or whatever gets diagnosed with cancer at the age of 45, God forbid. Okay, so then a first degree relative really needs to be screened about 10 years younger than that. So at 35. Right, right. And some of the patients coming into my office are 38 years old, 37 years old with cancer. And you're just like, okay, we're going to have a long conversation. We're going to figure this out. By the way, your kid needs to be screened at 27. Right, so even right? younger. Exactly. Yeah. Real quickly, we're, we're about out of time here. Would you like to see a change in our diet? Does this have a direct relation? Yeah, so the average American person does not eat near enough fiber and it's not the fun thing to eat it's you know greens and vegetables and oat bran and oatmeal but the reality is we need about 30 grams of fiber of diet or grams of fiber in our diet daily and we get about 15 and so if you do that the red meat stuff yeah it can increase it a little bit but the margin's really small if you really want to decrease um your um, the the rate of people having hemorrhoids or fistulas or fissures or all these other nonsense dealing with the areas down below just eat a whole bunch of fiber there you go and water. I'm gonna have salad for lunch. Will you show us your t-shirt? Yeah, absolutely. One of my patients made this for me and I thought it was so awesome. It was like, check, check your colon. Your yes. colon. I know, right? I love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Dr. Eric Askenasi, thank you so much for stopping by. That was a great conversation. And folks, don't be afraid of what's down there. The doctor's seen it a million times. Go get screened. Absolutely. It could save your life. And for more information, you can visit cancer.memorialherman.org slash colon or call 281-484-9221. And we'll be right back. Coming up on tomorrow's show, check this out. AJ and I are in the kitchen. I'm cooking with him. We had so much fun. Do you feel like you're tired of absolutely everything to keep the kids entertained? Try cooking with the kids. We're gonna share a kid-approved recipe your little ones will love to eat and get involved with. Oh, that looks good, tomatoes. All right, Ooh. we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. What'd you guys make?